I'm Chance Dorland, and this is the Spurs Insider, our weekly NBA podcast from ExpressNews.com. And I'm joined today by San Antonio Express News sports writer Tom Orsborne. Great to have you back here on the podcast, Tom, especially following a nice victory against Utah. Tell me about it. Yeah, my pleasure, Chance. Always, always good to be on the air with you. Um, yeah, I mean, stop the presses. Spurs have won two in a row. Uh, it's, it's their longest winning streak. First time they've won two in a row, uh, since they won a season high four consecutive games, uh, a stretch that a run that stretched over late October and early November. So it's a, it's a, it's a really fine accomplishment for this team. And, and the two game winning streak has been colored by them doing some things that we haven't seen much this season, good defense, Great ball movement, a lot of enthusiasm, um, you know, a lot of aggressiveness on both sides of the ball. They're really playing the way that uh, we all envisioned they would be at the start of the season, and and it just never came to fruition. But I don't want to say they've turned the corner, but, you know, they've got a six-game homestand right now. They're in the midst of a six-game homestand. That's the longest of the season, so – it's a great time for them to make some hay and to make some improvements and, and really get back to the kind of basketball that we we've all known uh, the Spurs to play all these years. Excellent. Yeah. Don't want to make any huge judgment calls as we know there's been a lot of up and down so far in the short season. Uh, But yeah, let's talk a little Jakob Pertl, Pau Gasol, Patty Mills today. We'll uh, talk about uh, those upcoming games that you just mentioned, but yeah, let's go back to this Utah victory and then talk about the previous three games where they played Utah twice and they played LA twice. Yeah. You know, they, um, they lost to Utah, uh, one of their 30-point losses, uh, uh, I think it was uh, on December 4th, early December. They came back uh, on Sunday, and they beat them 110-97. to 97. Just played a, a really good game, really good all-around game. Um, defensively, it was the first time in 11 straight games that they've held an opponent under 100, 100 points. So, yeah, I, I – I mean, that was that was a story coming out of that game that they played great defense against the Jazz in Salt Lake City. Previously, they had allowed Utah to shoot 60 percent from the field, 60 percent from uh, three point range. In this game, it's just the opposite. They hold them to 43.5 percent from the field, uh, 31 percent from three point range. And yeah, it was that was the story. They played great defense on the offensive end. You had you had uh, Rudy Gay uh, with one of his best games, if not the best of the season, with 23 points and matching a season high. I mean, a career high, 15 rebounds. Um, Aldridge had 20. DeRozan had 26. So yeah, it was just just a really neat game. But uh, the game that everyone was talking about uh, and the performance that everyone's been talking about occurred in that Lakers game on Friday night. Spurs win 133-120. Again, back to the defense. In the fourth quarter, they hold the Lakers to 21 points. But the big story out of that one was the emergence of Jakob Pertl, uh, the, the, the guy who was kind of a th- uh, viewed by many people as a throw-in on the blockbuster uh, Kawhi Leonard, DeMar DeRozan trade in July, has emerged as something more than that. Uh, Chance, he started the season slow, which is understandable. The kid was trying to get acclimated to uh, a new city, new teammates, new system. He started slow, made some mistakes on the court, saw his uh, playing time reduced. And then, to his credit, he's really made the most of an opportunity when, when Pau Gasol went down with a foot injury. He's been he's been really good in that in that Lakers game. He scores 14 points, uh, grabs eight rebounds. He's been great on the pick and roll. The guy sets great screens. Then he rolls to the basket uh, in a manner that the Spurs haven't seen from a big man in quite a while. So uh, kudos to him. Um, his teammates are raving about his play, his emergence, just the the overall confidence and and comfort level that he's showing on the court. So it's going to be interesting uh, down the road what they're going to do uh, when Gasol comes back. But uh, Pirtle is definitely something more than a throw-in. 
on that trade this summer. We're going to get to Pau Gasol and that uh, lingering foot injury, as you just mentioned here in a moment. But I want to throw back to these last four games, two wins, two losses against two teams. It really also can be broken down by road versus home. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the deal. They've they've struggled all year on the road. And really, they've struggled for quite quite some time on the road, uh, dating back to last season. They're playing much better at home, of course, um, and, and this this uh, home stand certainly is a like I said, it's it's a time for them to really take advantage of it with these home games. But um, yeah, you just hope that the spate of thirty point losses is over with. I mean, uh, uh, the embarrassing losses that they had, um, you know, uh, losing to Utah by thirty, um, that was certainly one of one of the more embarrassing games of the year but they bounced back from it they weathered it they they weathered it really well they never got too down on themselves and uh that brings me up that brings us to patty mills and and his role in helping to keep them uh you know help helping to keep them from getting too down keeping their heads up patty played a big part in that you know when when Manu Ginobili left, that was a huge void in leadership that the Spurs had. Um, you know, the guy was respected by everyone, and, and he was a great leader. He just he just knew when to say the right things. He never said too much. Uh, he he was never an in your face leader, but he would speak up when needed. Uh, just had a great touch for leadership. So there's a tremendous void when he leaves. Patty Mills, who is a uh, uh, was always great friends with Manu and, and really um, Manu's protege. I mean, Manu kind of mentored Patty. Patty really looked up to him. And Patty learned a lot from Manu about leadership. And it's showing up in spades uh, this year. Um, he's been very vocal. Uh, again, not saying too much, picking his spots. But his enthusiasm, the way he carries himself, uh, his, his level of enthusiasm for the game, for life in general, it just really, it, it, it really spills over to his teammates. And, and I talked to pop about that uh, a couple of days ago and he said, look, Patty Mills is the ultimate team guy. And I get that quote and I go into the locker room and I ask guys about it. Davis Bertans, Bryn Forbes, they both pointed to Patty's leadership as a reason why they didn't go all the way down after those 30 point losses. They kept that, they kept their head up they weathered it, and uh, Patty was a big reason for that. Um, you know, he has some defensive uh, deficiencies, and and his critics will point those out very quickly. But you know, the intangibles that he brings to the Spurs is a big reason why they invested so much money in him and why they value him so much. He's been great as a scorer off the bench, um, you know, as a playmaker off the bench. But again. It's the intangibles that he brings. Uh, uh, he gets along with everyone. Everyone likes him. And he's just a tremendous leader. And the Spurs re really value that. They value the fact that he is a bridge between the big three era and this, this era that they're going through right now with so many newcomers. He's, te he's helping Pop teach those guys, the newcomers, like uh, DeRozan, Pirtle, um, and, and the and the younger guys like Bryn Forbes, Dark White, he's teaching them the Spurs culture and doing a very good job of it. So some good news with Patty Mills, good news with Jakob Pertl, eh, eh, here or there, mixed bag with Pau Gasol. Tell me about that lingering foot injury. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a tough break for the 18th year veteran, um, 38 years old. Uh, you know, it started out as a as a sore foot. Um, he got a second opinion and, uh, you know, that's still really not clear the extent or what the exact injury is, but suffice it to say that foot's been very sore, sore enough that he can't play. He was in the walking boot for about four weeks. The good news is this week or, or this last week, he got out of the boot. Uh, the walking boot is no longer something that he has to need to wear to wear. I talked to him about it uh, at length in the locker room before a couple of uh, recent home games. And he said, you know, 
I'm, I'm doing everything I can to get back. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping up uh, as far as my shape goes, cardio, cardio wise, doing a lot of bicycling, uh, doing a lot of weightlifting. He says he feels really good. You know, this, this time off has allowed other aches and pains to heal. But the foot injury is the big thing. And, and it's, it's really puzzling. Nobody seems to know exactly what it is. And nobody has a timeline for when he's going to be back. But Pal, Pal's a good soldier. I mean, he's a real pro. He's not letting this, he's not getting too down about this. He's not blaming anyone for it. He's just acknowledging and owning he's got this injury. It's going to take time for him to get back. And he's doing, uh, as the pro that he is, he's doing everything he can to uh, facilitate the healing process. And um, given, given that, and uh, given the fact that he's been out for so long, I wouldn't be surprised maybe to see him back after Christmas. I know he's got his fingers crossed on that. But again, it'll be interesting when he comes back. Uh, the Spurs miss him. There's no, there's no doubt about that. They miss, they miss his passing with that second unit. His high-low game with uh, LaMarcus Aldridge has always been excellent. And uh, Pop said, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago that they really miss his locker room presence. Um, so he's going to, when he comes back, they're going to find a role for him. But with Pirtle emerging so much, uh, you know, it may be hard for Powell to play the amount of minutes that he was playing. Um, and that's a good problem to have. I mean, uh, you'd love to see a young kid like uh, Pirtle get better and better. And um, I think, uh, uh, whatever role he'll have, I think the Saul will handle it like the pro that he is. So does that mean Gasol just takes a new role? Does that mean maybe a new team? I mean, there's been some recent history of, of some people heading out somewhere else when they um, had some fresh blood coming on the court. Yeah, I, I don't see any indication of that. And his contract uh, certainly would be uh, problematic in that area. But, um, you know, the Spurs value him. Like I said, they value his passing. They value his presence in the locker room. I think they'll they'll work this out. Uh, they'll find a find a way to get playing time for both of those uh, big men. But like I said, it, it's hard it's hard not to play Pirtle right now. And a great example of that popped up in the Lakers game. Uh, you know, Lamarcus Aldridge was on the bench in the fourth quarter against the Lakers because Pirtle was playing so well. I mean, you you just can't you just can't go with what you've always done when you've got this young kid playing as well as he is. And, um, you know, uh, I think Pirtle will get better and better. The more, the more playing time he gets, the more confident he'll get, the more comfortable he'll get. And it's quite clear that uh, he's grasping the system now a lot better than he did at the start, both on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, it was funny during that Lakers game, he said that his mom uh, was in town from Austria, and maybe that had a little to do with uh, uh, his performance. But I. I, that's really cute and everything, and I'm sure he was fired up to play well in front of his mom. But the truth is, the guy's just coming on, and uh, uh, it's really fun to see. It's it's one of the in this season that fans are still trying to adjust to the fact chance that these aren't the Spurs of your. You, you've got to hang your hat on watching these young guys develop, and it's it's been neat to see Pirtle develop, Derek White. Um, you know, Bryn Forbes, uh, you've got Chemezi Matu. He's not getting much playing time, but he's making the most of his, uh, um, his stints in the G League. And then we've got Lonnie Walker, who's still in the G League with the Austin Spurs, rehabbing from that preseason knee injury. And uh, he's been playing pretty well uh, down there in, in some limited minutes with the, uh, with the Austin Spurs. So that's that's something that that fans uh, really need to hang on to is just just watching these guys develop and uh, seeing where that goes. I, I for one, enjoy it myself, uh, but I'm not a fan. I know the fans want to see a championship team year in and year out, but it's not going to happen this year. So you just want to see this team develop as well as it can and get the most. Uh, see Pop try to get the most out of this roster that he can, and and so far. I think he's on his way to doing a great job just like he did last year. 
So let's finish out on a high note. As you mentioned, Tom got some uh, more home games coming up. They're going to be at home until the 19th when they go to Orlando. So tell me about these upcoming games and what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, it's been kind of a, a revenge week for the Spurs. Um, you know, they've, they've played teams that they've lost to and uh, uh, they've been out for revenge. They, they avenged the loss to the Lakers. They avenged the loss to Utah. Now they've got Phoenix coming up uh, Tuesday night. That's been an interesting series. I mean, I, I, I had the pleasure or displeasure, however you want to look at it, of, of covering both those games in Phoenix this year. They win the first one chance by 30, then they lose the second one by 20. So it's been a roller coaster ride in that series. But, um, you know, the Spurs are facing on Tuesday night the Suns are the worst team in the league, 4-22. and 22. They've lost eight straight. Uh, should be another victory for the Spurs. And then, you know, after that, you've got the Los Angeles Clippers. The Spurs owe them one after losing in Los Angeles uh, earlier in the season. So uh, that'll be a tough game. The Clippers, the Clippers have played the Spurs well um, uh, for a long time now. Uh, Doc Rivers does a great team with that, a uh, great job with that roster. And uh, Lou Williams uh, uh, really uh, uh, burned them so badly in the fourth quarter in that game out in Los Angeles that I covered. So then let's see, after that, you've got Chicago coming in on the 15th. Um, on Saturday night, uh, that should be a Spurs win without a doubt. I mean, yeah, it's Chicago, but also they just recently had that coaching change. Yes, yes, that's true. And the Spurs only been them by one point out in Chicago, but I'm going to mark that down as a Spurs victory. Um, and then they, they finished this homestand against the Philadelphia 76ers on December 17th, a Monday night. That's going to be a tough one, too. So I've got them winning against Phoenix. Uh, uh, the Clippers, I'll chalk that one of us a loss. Okay, so one and one. They'll beat Chicago, and then Philadelphia is going to be a tough game, too. Um, so maybe they go two and two the rest of this homestand. Uh, but, you know, like I said, they've been playing better. They're playing better defensively. The communication has gotten better on defense. The, the adherence to the game plan has gotten better and pop has kind of simplified things uh, game plan wise. So who knows, maybe, maybe they can pull these games out and, and go six and oh on this homestand, but realistically the Clippers game and the 76ers games are, are going to be tough ones. Thanks to San Antonio Express News sports writer Tom Orsborne for joining me for today's episode of the Spurs Insider, our weekly NBA podcast from ExpressNews.com. For the San Antonio Express News, I'm Chance Dorland. <laughs>